In this episode, I'm going to cover native platform interactions. I'll start off by configuring the platform channel, then I'll send and get data from Android, and then I'll send and get data from iOS, and after that, I'll show how to start an intent from Android and an extension from iOS. So to get started, I'm going to go to the IDE, and in this case, I'm using Android Studio, and I've already configured a project. It's a bare bones project. I created it from file, new project, and then I, I removed some of the basics and, and created a simple display with a home app bar and no messages yet text and that's down here what i want to do here is update this message send a message to android and then update it on the return so how would i do that the first thing i got to do is set up a platform channel it's like a tv channel to me so i'm going to construct that and it's going to be a static constant variable or member for the class and i'm going to go const because I got to go static const and instantiates const instantiates this method channel and I'm going to define my method channel with demo. I got to give it a name that's unique so I could have more than one channel. So in this case it's going to be my domain name and I'm just going to call it information. It could be something that's more relevant to your application process. So I'm gonna import this library and I hit Alt Enter and that library is now Im imported. Now I have a platform channel that is on my Flutter side. I've got to configure it on Android and iOS as well. But before I get there, I want to construct the rest of this platform channel call on the Flutter side. Okay, so first of all, I want to get a message. So that means I have to invoke a message, send it to the platform, and then when it returns, I want to update and set that state, which will re-render um, the application on my device. Okay, so let's say I'm going to say future because I want to get a string in the future, and that's going to be my message. So I'm going to go private, get message. And let's say I'm going to complete that. But before I complete that, I'm going to add async so I can type the statements in a linear fashion and await for them to complete. So I'm going to import the future library with Alt Enter, import async, and I want to return this value. So I'm working it backwards a little here. And I want to define the value with a string. And I'm going to tell you my intent with that type declaration there. And then I'm going to say, okay, my value is going to come from the platform. So that's going to be, okay, platform, uh, invoke message. And I'm going to define my message as such. I'm going to say, okay, this is my message, but I'm going to define get message. This is what I want to do. That's my action I want to do. And then I could send, but I'll cover that a little bit. And, okay, so platform, okay, so this is a future, so I need to wait for it. So I'm going to call a wait and say wait for this future to complete. And I might as well say I want to try, try and make sure this is um, – successful. If not, I want to catch the exception and say print um, exception. Now I might want to do something more visual here. In this case, if my method channel doesn't work, something went wrong on the on the other side and maybe in iOS or Android, I get back the exception. I want to to handle it. Okay, so I'm not going to cover that in great detail today, but I just want to cover that in the basic form. Okay, so now I have get message. Now where do I want to call it? Well, in this case, I just want to do something simple in this tutorial. So when the state for the application page is initialized, I want to render or, or fetch the message and return it with something modified from the, the platform side and then re-render the page. Okay, so how do I do that? So I'm going to get message. In this case, I'm going to use the then callback and say string, and this is my message that returns, and then I'll do an inside or an anonymous function here. And in this anonymous function, I want to say, okay, once I retrieve the message in the future, I'm going to go set state, and this has a non another anonymous function inside of it. I could use a method or ex to extract that. I want to update my internal state variable to message that is returned sometime later in the future. Okay, so that wires it up. So if I look at this, when this page is rendered, it will fetch get message, then it will update the message. And that get message function or method here plat calls platform invoke message 
get messaged. Okay, so let's move on to the Android configuration. So the way I wanna do that, I wanna show you how to open up Android Studio for this application. What does that mean? I've already got Android Studio. Why do I have to have a, open up another version? Well, if I look up here, Android Studio has a folder called Android, and this is basically a separate application within it. At least that's the way I think of it. So I could go right click on it and go down to Flutter, the Flutter menu, and open up this module in Android Studio. And why would I wanna do that? Well, let me just show you. So I'm gonna open it up. It opens up and it warns me, okay, the Gradle plugin update recommended. Well, I'm gonna ignore that. I don't need to worry about that for this configuration. Gradle then activates and says, okay, I gotta do some things. I gotta update this project. Now I have an Android project open that is running with the Android configuration, which means Android Studio is gonna be um, running per se as a native project. And this has some advantages when you're working with either plugins or this platform channel because I, when I open up main activity, which is the class that I'm after to edit in, it's gonna work in a, the editor is gonna work natively. So I can talk to it with basically writing Java instead of Dart in this case. And I'm gonna ignore that. So now it's easier to write with Java in this context because I've opened up the studio. Now I could even run this project up here as a native application as well. I could hit run or debug as or as such. That debug button will run the project just like if I were to do it in Flutter. Okay, so now I'm ready to wire it up and how will I do that? So the very first thing is what I wanna do is start a method channel call. So I'm gonna go new method channel, and I gotta get the flutter view, and this that's the first argument. Then I'm gonna say channel, which I gotta define here. Okay, so I gotta define the channel, so how would I do that? I gotta go up to the top of the class, private, static, final, string, and I gotta do all caps for the static type there equals and then this is the same class that I used in let me go fetch that I want to make sure my string matches and yes this will help make a little bit more sense of the context I define the method channel on the flutter side as demo.gocket which is my example domain name I'm going to go back to the other Android Studio option and then paste that. As you can see, this string must match exactly so I can communicate on this channel with this name. Okay, so that defines the channel. Okay, so now I'm going to go set method. Whoops, I'm in all caps. I'm going to go set method call handler. And then I want to define that as a new method, new method channel. And that's a call handler, auto complete. And then I could do auto format there. And let me minimize this on the left. Okay, so now I have a new method flutter. I'm just reviewing just to make sure I get this correct. And then on the callback, which means flutter's now communicating, it's gonna call this when I invoke a channel on the flutter side. Okay, so now I can do the magic inside here. So what I wanna do is, okay, so the method call is defined in this object. So I can go if method call method, and let's say equals, uh, okay, get message. Exactly, this needs to be exactly like it is on the Flutter side. Now let me just go back to that because I've had problems here and I just wanna note that this, this string right here has to be exact. It doesn't matter single or double quotes in this case because it's the same either way in Dart. But if I had parentheses here, it's not the same as the other side if it doesn't have parentheses. Okay, so I think I beat that one. I want to go back to Android Studio for the native app or native platform. And okay, so when the method channel says, okay, I'm gonna invoke this and I get the method call object, I want to delineate it and say, is it get message? Is this, because I could have several different calls in, in this channel. Okay, so it is. So I'm gonna say if, and now I want to say, I want to construct a string that says, let's say, let's take that message that I retrieved and send it back 
with something extra. Okay, so then I say to the result object, I go result, oops, not return, result, is I'm gonna call success because this is gonna be a successful call. I could call, let's say, what, what are the other options here? I can go command space. And this is why I'm in the Android Studio I opened up Android Studio for Android because I get the um, the native editor help with auto assist and library help and class path. I could say it's going to return with an error. So instead of success, I could say it's going to return with an error. Okay, so I'm going to select success and I want to return a message. And so that's going to be my message. I'm going to go string message is equal to, uh, let's say... Android Studio Android says hi. Period. End. Terminate. Okay, so now that I've finished it, I want to test it out and see if it updates Android. So I'm going to go back, and in this case, I've got to restart the application so it updates the native Android parts. So I'm going to go down and just hit restart down here in the debugger and restart the application. Basically, it will reload the application, recompile the Android site, and update. Awesome! I just see, I can see that the, the message from Android now works. Okay, so let, let me say if I wanted to send data to, to the native platform and get something back. So how would I send it some data uh, on the same invoke message or method call? Well, the first thing I want to do is create a map and this will be sent as arguments. Okay, so I'm gonna go var map equals, I don't have to use new because I can use a map literal and that map literal, I'm gonna define the generics here, or explicitly say this is my intent here, it's gonna be a string and okay, string and then the other one is gonna be dynamic. Let me just finish this and I'll show you why I said dynamic. Well, let me go to the guide. I have the guide loaded and in the guide, if I look at writing custom platform specific code with platform channels, if I scroll down, I can list the data types regarding which platform they are on. So Dart, I can send for that dynamic, it's, uh, I could provide a Boolean, an integer, and integers of different values, a double string, and so on. And for Android, those turn up to be, or convert to, the same can be said for iOS. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. So I'm not gonna cover this in great detail. I just wanna show how a string goes so you can see how the wiring is configured. So I'm gonna go back to Android and my phone. And this map, I'm going to say for, for the, the map key, I'm gonna say this is gonna be from, this message is from, and I'm gonna say it's going to be another string for the dynamic value, and that will be Brandon. That's me. And I'll trail with a comma in this in this map. Okay, so this map, let's call it, let me call it send map. That seems to make more sense. Okay, send map, I can provide, if I go comma, control space, I can go send map. Okay, if I look, command click on the invoke method, I can see that there's a dynamic set of arguments there that will be sent along with this invoke method. Okay, so main, then the question is, how do I retrieve those on the native platform? Okay, for, for Java or Android with Java, it could be Kotlin as well. Okay, so what I wanna do is retrieve the method call arguments, and what I wanna do is go, let's say, method call dot arguments and that I'm looking for the method not the field so I'm going to click the method and terminate that line and I want to define this arguments let's just look at that what does it return method arguments it's going to be a generic so what I want to do is call let's say uh, map and that's going to be string and object because I defined it as a dynamic on the flutter side and I can call this uh, variable arguments equals and I'm gonna spell that right that's arguments and I'm gonna auto import the map library alt enter and now I have access to the arguments well I could say final here because they've they only need to be defined once in this call 
Now I can go, let's say, when I get the message, I can say what is um, what I have here is from is equal to arguments dot get and in the map I'm going to call from because I'm sending a map but I've got, got to cast it because it's dynamic and I'm going to hit alt enter and just say cast a string and so that way I didn't have to auto type it. So now I'm getting the from argument or from property from the map. And now I can say from, instead of saying just hi, I can say from. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's save this. And I'll go back to Flutter. And I'll go back to Flutter and then reload it. I just want to show you what happens if I run from the beginning. It doesn't update it, so what I want to do is click on debug and restart. Excellent. It updated. It says Android says hi, Brandon. So if I look minimize this at the bottom. If I look, I can send this map with the from property, the key value, key and value as Brandon. And I invoke the message, get message. If I go to the Android system, I retrieve the arguments, that map, with which is a string and dynamic type. And then I, re I say, if this me method is called get message, I can retrieve the from, from that map and say, and and construct a new message and return it back with the from and I use the result to success as a message. Okay, so that's pretty slick. So that basically shows me how to wire up everything as a platform channel on Android. What if I wanna do this on iOS? Because you have to do this on each platform that you're communicating with that's loaded up in Flutter. Okay, so let's start up that process. I'll come back to the intents on Android in a moment. Okay, so let's look at starting up iOS. In this case, I could, let me just run down. Let's say you don't have Xcode installed, but you have to if you're using a Mac and such. If I go down to Runner, I'm looking for App Delegate, and this is the file I wanna edit, but I wanna edit it in Xcode, and here's why, and I'll show why. So I'm gonna open up Xcode, by selecting on iOS, I'm gonna right click, go down to Flutter and open up this iOS module and Xcode. Okay, so now that Xcode is loaded up, typically it, it loads up in an unexpanded state. And I've already opened the file once. So let's pretend that it is a brand new application and I've been, I haven't been here before. So I'm gonna go over to Runner to the left. This is the application. And here's the app delegate I just opened up on the other side. So I click on that and it opens the editor with app delegate.m. Okay, so now I'm ready to wire up and do the same thing in context to what I did in Android. Okay, so how do I wire it up? Well, to save a little time, I'm gonna do a copy and paste here. So I'm gonna copy and then I'm gonna come down and paste and so I'm gonna go control A and go control I for formatting. Okay, so now I have controller and channel. Okay, so I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, so this says set method handler. The channel is gonna set the method handler and then we have two arguments in that or parameters in this method that's being passed. Okay, so this is the call and result, which is just like Android. So now I can say with an if statement, I can say here, if, and then the string literal, and we're gonna say get message, and then this has to be equal to is equal to, and what are we gonna say equal to? The, the, the call dot method. Okay, and then gotta add that method body and say, okay, if I'm equal, I can return a result, return a result, and how, how will I return that result? I can say in a string and then I can say message here is equal to iOS says greetings and then terminate that. Okay, and then return the message. Okay, so that's a string literal and I forgot the at symbol there to make that a scalar. Okay, so that's a message and let's just try that. I'm gonna save it here and go back to, to Flutter 
and say, okay, I want to restart with Android. So let's load up Android. So I have Android here. I'm going to set it for iPhone. Okay, so I'm going to change it from Android to iPhone, and then I'm going to run it from the beginning. So let's run that. And this is the same context. I could restart it down here as well if I had it running previously. Excellent. Now I can see that the message went to iOS and then came back as says, iOS says greetings. Well, as in, as in with Android here, I had I have also have a map that I'm sending it. So how do I get that map on iOS and say this is from and then concatenate that on the string and send it back? So let's go back to Xcode. First, I get a fetch uh, from from that map. So how would I do that? So I can do this. I can go. Let's define that in a string, and I'm going to go and make a variable from. And then I'm going to say equal to call arguments. I'm going to, and then the arguments I'm going to say is equal to the string scalar from, and then terminate that line. So now I have access to the from. Well, how do I append that to messages? Okay, so what I could do is go down here and I can make a new string. And then I'm going to say return message. And then I'm going to say message. I'm going to get a reference to my previous message and then I can say call the string append by string and then I'm going to, going to put in from and then terminate that line and then I'm going to return that message okay so I'm going to save it did I call from there's from why is it complaining unused from unused return variable to return message okay I gotta update that okay excellent thank you Xcode. That's a perfect example of why I opened the native editor for the application is I can get help because especially when I'm newer to Objective C. By the way, this could be Swift as well if you configured your application as such. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Flutter and Okay, here's my Flutter application. Open up iOS and what I want to do is click on debug and I'm going to restart it because I edited it the code in the native platform and I want to reload that code. So awesome. I have now sent a message to the iOS platform and retrieved it back and I could have added a space there but I forgot and here it is greetings Brandon. So that's excellent. So if I go back to if I go to Android I have the Android message. It's the same contents context but I have a little bit different for each dependent platform. So let me review real quick what's going on in this directory structure because I could edit it here directly. I just want to show you what I did. So in main I wired up get message which invoked a method called get message and I also sent some arguments. In this argument it was a map of a string and dynamic. So this is really easy. And by the way, if you want to see more complicated methods or complex methods that are done, I would recommend checking out the Firebase Auth or Firebase Database or Firebase Cloud Firestore. That will give you a good example of how do you pass data back and forth and you could originate it on either the platform side or the Flutter side. Okay, so that gives me the main.dart, the Flutter side, I call it. And then I can look at the and the iOS, the iOS platform. I could open up Runner. This is the application, and I'm looking at the app delegate.m. And if I minimize on the left, this is what I did in the native application on the other side. So let's just look at that to compare. Here it is. It's all pretty because it's the native editor. Or I could do it in Android Studio. In this case, I just don't get as much help. So if I do make a mistake in here per se, if I leave off uh, uh, asterisk, which de references that variable, I have to, I get an error. So let's just do a save it here, cause the save and go back. It should update and we should, we should see an error. Well, this error is not getting picked up in the editor right away. Okay, so here it is, it, it picked up. So it takes a moment. I see the error here. If I go back to Android Studio, I don't see the error here. Okay, so I'm going to add that back, save it, and that just forces it to update faster. Okay, so that's that's iOS. If I minimize that or collapse that tree, and I'm going to go to Android. In this case, I could edit the values right here, go to Java, 
and main activity. So I could edit the values right here. But this doesn't have the class path and the full editor experience. It's pretty close though. So if I make a mistake here, per se, if I left off, let's just take out a library here or a package in this case. And let's say, let's say if I removed method call. Okay, it does make it does show the class path correctly. So in this case, I, I was wrong with my first assumption. At any rate, I can go to the native editor and look at that and say, okay, this is the native editor and I could edit it as well. Or I can edit it as well in the Flutter version where I have the main Dart or the main activity for the Android Studio platform. Okay, so if I open up project and collapse both, that basically brings me to the conclusion of wiring up iOS or Android platform and communicating directly with that platform. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna conclude with opening an intent with Android or an extension with iOS. So how would I do that? Well, I'm gonna do this real quick. And so what I wanna do is go to the Android. I'll start with Android because I wanna open up an activity using an intent. And I'm gonna go to the app source main Java. In this case, I'll edit it directly in the main activity, open the main activity, collapse that over there on the right. So now instead of actually just doing some, instead of using, I'll use the same get message channel and I'll comment that out. And what I wanna do is open up an Android in intent here. So how do I do that? So basically I could say, I'm gonna copy and paste this. I've already built the call, so I'm gonna paste it in and auto-complete that. It says open web page. So I added a method. So I'm going to go open web page. And what web page? I'll say https flutter.io. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I'll go back to, well, I'm already in Flutter. So I'm going to go to debug here and then go to the Android simulator, emulator, restart it. Oh, that's iOS. Whoops. I'm going to go to the Android emulator and restart that. So I'll select Android and restart it. So one of the things down here is these main.darts. You can't really tell which one's iOS or Android. So I was on the wrong one. So I'm going to go to main and then restart it. This would be nice if we could label these according to the emulator that it's running on. So I could tell the difference. Okay, excellent. As you can see, the intent was passed on over, and I can say just once, and it's gonna pass off to, to the browser and open up that intent. So let's go back. Let's go back to that. Let me look at the main activity. Okay, here's the intent definition, and here's start activity. So, and I'm gonna start that intent. So that's pretty easy. I can just say open web page, and now I can start any activity I want. Of course, I've gotta have privileges for that. Okay, so let's try this in iOS. Okay, so let's go back to the iOS version, minimize that on the right, and we'll collapse what we don't need here. Here's here's app delegate, and what I have, I already wired this up, and so I'm gonna copy and paste it. Okay, so I'm gonna paste this in, I'll comment this out just like the other. Okay, it doesn't auto do it, so I'm gonna just comment this out. And I'm gonna to go to iOS in this case, and I'm gonna paste it here just in case I am missing an import. And I do need an import, I think. Okay, so I've pasted it. And you can see I've, I send the message of shared application to UI application, and I get back the UI application Safari. And in this case, I take my string scalar in it with string and it allocates that. So that is then instantiated as a URL. And then I say my Safari, open up this URL. Okay, excellent. So let's try that. So go back, back to Flutter. And I'm gonna go to debug and go and restart Flutter. So, or restart iOS and open up iOS there. If that's not correct, let's just focus in on iOS up here and hit run from the beginning. When the application is instantiated or booted, it should. Okay, there it went. It forwarded off and started that extension Safari. 
Okay, so excellent. So that was pretty easy to start. So that concludes wiring up the platform communication for Android and iOS. I'll attach this code to a gist and attach that link to the description in this video. Click on the link to get the code. And thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter and I'll catch you later.